It is 2023 and we are living in times that do not make sense at all. Cars are worth way more than they're supposed to be or way less than they seem like they should be. So today we're going to be kind of navigating the tricky land of what Euro cars, specifically Mercedes, you might want to be looking for in 2023 if you're looking to go as fast as possible for less than $10,000. My name is Danny Kruger with FCP Euro. I'm the resident Mercedes nerd here, and I am always hunting for a bargain Benz whenever I can grab one. And because of that, that 10K price bracket is one of my favorites. It's great if you're trying to look for a future investment because a lot of the time the cars are going to turn over at a certain point, or if you're just looking for a daily driver that you can enjoy, or even a build that you can hop onto later on like our golden era. Uh, 10K is a really good starting point, but before we even get to that, I'm going to kind of split our list of cars today to a bracket even lower, sub $5,000. So this is if you're really looking for a good project, or alternatively, if you're looking for just an affordable, fun car that you can daily drive. So for our first car on today's list, we're going to be talking about the W208 chassis CLK with the CLK430. The CLK430, and specifically the W208 chassis, is kind of a weird one. It looks a lot like a W210 E-Class, so the two usually get grouped together. But in reality, the W208, the CLK, is actually built on the W202 platform, which is a C-Class. So the CLK is effectively just a two-door version of the C-Class sedan. And what that means for us, when you boil things down kind of to their essence, while the CLK430 is a car that's often forgotten or underappreciated, it shares the entire driveline and really the structure with the Mercedes C43 AMG that pretty much everyone lusts after. It's got the same 4.3 liter M113 V8, the same 722.6 bulletproof five-speed auto, double wishbone front suspension, really everything underneath the car is the exact same. And while for a C43, you'll go out there and you'll pay 10 to 15 grand pending condition because it's a super desirable car these days, if you're willing to go for a coupe, you can scoop up a CLK430 in pretty good condition for $4,000 or less. It's a super affordable way to get a car that has a big throaty V8, rips big burnouts if that's what you're into, but it does zero to 60 in like six seconds flat. They're also completely timeless in their styling, just like the W210 E-Class. They totally hold up today. And really the only things you wanna look out for on them, body rust is going to be a big one pending the climate that you live in. They'll get it on the rear fenders and on the doors, so look out for that. Undercarriage rust as well. And other than that, just general maintenance. The M113 can be a little leaky oil-wise, so keep an eye on that as well and an ignition service on those. Keep in mind the M113 is twin spark, so two spark plugs per cylinder, which also means two wires per cylinder. So a simple ignition service can suddenly rack up a pretty hefty bill. But CLK430, if you're shopping under 5K, definitely a good Mercedes to hop into. So moving on from the W208 CLK430 comes, well, it's younger brother, really. The W209 CLK500. So we're just shuffling forward one generation here, and it's basically the same blueprint that the W208 had. It's also built on the C-Class platform as a two-door coupe instead, but the difference being here, we've moved from the W202 C-Class to the W203 C-Class. Parts availability for you is going to be awesome. And also, it's the same tried and true recipe of the five-speed auto that just works and an M113 V8 right in front of it. This one's a five liter instead of the 4.3 that was in the CLK430, so you get a little bit more power, and honestly, great place to spend your time. They're super reliable cars. They look modern, unlike maybe the 208, which looks a little bit dated now, even though it looks great. They, I mean, you could drive it every day and you can pick one up with some miles on it, admittedly for three, four grand, and they'll do zero to 60 in the five second range. If you want a V8, honestly, across all makes out there, I think you'd be hard pressed to have more fun for cheaper than a W209 CLK 500. All right, so next up, moving outside the CLK for our last cars of the under 5k bracket. It's going to be one that I hold near and dear to my heart. It's going to be the 2002 Mercedes C230 Coupe specifically. We'll get into that in a minute. As well as the Mercedes SLK 230 convertible. Why these guys? Well, they're both powered by the M111 compressor engine. This is a 2.3 liter four cylinder. It comes from the factory, from Mercedes supercharged. But the key here is that it's dual overhead cam. It has forged internals from the factory. They're super robust, and while their architecture is a little bit older, you can do whatever you want with them if you're going to be tinkering and tuning. I mean, you can reduce the pulley or overdrive the pulley, add a little more boost from the supercharger, 250 horsepower all day, no problem. Or, if you want to get a little more creative, you can rip that supercharger off, throw a turbocharger on there, and 
They'll make 350 horsepower all day, no sweat, as long as you add some fuel. An added benefit to both of these cars is the fact that they have pretty good parts interchangeability with a bunch of the cars around them that they share a platform with. And more importantly, they were both available with manual transmissions here in the United States. These are gonna be under five grand all day long. Again, specifically the O2 C230 Coupe got the M111, then they moved on to the M271, which if you're tuning, you might want to avoid. It's just a little bit less robust. But then the SLK 230, every one of them that we got here had that M111. All right, so moving above our 5K threshold, getting a little more expensive now, but still well under 10K. It's another one of my favorites, and this is the W163 chassis ML55 AMG, also known as the Alabama trash can. Sometimes these come under fire for their build quality, but when it comes to the driveline, there are no concerns. It's an all-wheel drive version of that same five-speed we keep talking about. It's a 5.4 liter version of the M113 V8 that we keep talking about, though this one is AMG tinkered. It's a high 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, body-on-frame SUV. It's super comfortable to drive. They're bulletproof. They have all the ground clearance. They have a great drive line underneath them. Whether you're in the off-roading, whether you just want an SUV to just kind of hum down the highway with, whatever you may be looking for, the ML55 has it for you. And for that reason, how could you be any happier than a big V8 SUV that you can just drive every day? It's a great pick for under 10 grand. So while the ML55 is one of my better picks under 10 grand, if you're just looking for something to live with every day, we also have the M112K twins. So M113K is the supercharged V8 that whether you know Mercedes or whether you don't so much, you know this engine. It's in the E55. They were amazing back in the day. They made 470 horsepower stock and then people started tuning them and all of a sudden we see cars with 200,000 miles that have been making 100, 150, 200 horsepower more than they were supposed to for years and they're still holding up. So everyone knows the M113K, but people often forget about its little brother, the M112K, which is basically the same engine, minus two cylinders, but also supercharged. So you'd find this guy in the US in the C32 AMG, that's the W203 chassis, and the SLK32 AMG, that's the R170 chassis. So you could have either a sedan or a convertible, either of them with that same bulletproof five speed and a supercharged V6. Stock, it made 350 horsepower. Again, you do a pulley and a tune, you're already at 400 horsepower and it sounds awesome. It's kind of unique. It's a little different from all of these other V8s on our list and they're like six, seven, eight grand all day long, depending on how, what the shape is that you wanna buy the car in or how modified. Basically, the only things you have to look out for on these, again, rust can be a little bit of a thing on both of them. Also, they're old now and they've passed through a lot of hands most likely, so make sure you take a, run a Carfax report to make sure the car's been in any big collisions. And other than that, really just cooling. Cooling is the biggest nemesis of the M112K because of that supercharger. Make sure the car has been, if it's modified, modified appropriately. And also these get a little weepy silk for oil leaks. Other than that, you can enjoy these every day. If you want a convertible, you can daily drive. I don't know if there's a better one than the SLK32. They are a blast to drive. So sticking with that pairing of the five-speed automatic because it's bulletproof and really easy to live with, and also the 5.4 liter AMG M113 V8 because of the exact same thing, we have a car that we've kind of already touched on and it's sort of distant relative that gets mistaken for its brother. That's going to be the W208 CLK55 and the W210 E55. Now, we kind of touched on this with the CLK430 when we were talking about it earlier. These two are often mistaken as being basically the same chassis, when in reality, they just have really similar styling. But in this case, they both get the same engine and transmission. And as we're mentioning, while the suspension is totally different between the two of them, it's the same sort of spirit. They're both going to have the double wishbone front. They both cruise excellent. You basically have the option of either a sedan or a coupe. Now, it's up to you which one you want to pick as your favorite. I personally like the CLK just because it's a little bit lighter and a little bit more nimble but also there's definitely merit in the 210 for a nice cruiser. Either one of them are great at just hunkering down on the highway. They get reasonable fuel economy, which is shocking, and you can still daily drive them every day. They're super comfortable on the inside. The monoblock wheels and the styling, the blockiness of both cars is truly timeless and makes it one of the best AMGs when we think back over the last 30 or 40 years. They're one of the most iconic cars that AMG has ever touched. You can pick them up well under 10 grand usually, the 210s are starting to creep up, so if you want one of them, get on that right now. And you can enjoy them every single day. The interiors, the leather can be two-toned depending on how they're optioned, bird's eye maple, and it all, it all holds up really well. They're great cars. The only thing you ever really wanna look out for on them, besides the standard things we've already touched on, being 
M113 V8 leakiness and 722.6 servicing and things like that. Just body and chassis rust. Both of these had issues with rust in little crevices where road salt collects like the fenders and things like that. So keep an eye on that, look for a maintenance history. Other than that, you're going to have a great car that you can drive for a long time and also probably make money on in a few years if the market keeps going the way it's headed. All right, so say the M112K maybe isn't for you. It sounds a little too complicated. Our next car isn't really a car, if I'm being totally honest. I'm just going to say anything with an M273 engine. So that is the 5.5 liter V8 that replaced the M113 that we've been talking about basically this whole time. It came along in a mid 2000s, around 2006. It's been in a whole bunch of different cars, SUVs, sedans, convertibles, you name it. Basically all this thing is, it's a dual overhead cam, variable valve time V8. Stock, they make 400 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque, more than enough and very well-rounded. They're a lot more simple than the M113 if you're just kind of equipped for normal vehicle understanding. It's an all aluminum engine. It has a single spark plug per cylinder. They're really easy to live with. Pretty much anything that got this motor gives you 400 horsepower. It sounds awesome. It revs high. It's also reasonably economical, which is ridiculous. But cars that got this engine, we have the W211 E-Class and the E550. Moving on to the W212, the E550 got this for 2010, 2011. It's basically anything that ends in a 550 pre-2011 in a Mercedes, whether it's the ML550, the, I mean, I could just keep going all day long. This engine is awesome. I personally have a huge affinity for them and I think they're massively, massively underappreciated. My personal pick would probably be a W212 E550 or in coupe format, the C207, which is just an E-Class coupe. Uh, I like the way the cars look and you get the seven speed auto behind them, which a little bit quicker to shift than the five speed we've been talking about all along. Alternatively, if you grab a W211 E550 with the 4MATIC package, you're going to get an all-wheel drive version of the 5-speed hooked up to that very same engine. Still pretty bulletproof. Honestly, the only ones that I would recommend you're a little bit cautious with are going to be cars sporting the 7-speed automatic in an all-wheel drive or 4MATIC blueprint. Reason being, they had some things around the transfer case as well as some bearings inside that are a little bit failure prone, but if you find yourself an M273 car with a rear-wheel drive, seven speed or an all-wheel drive five speed you should be pretty much good to go all right so moving right along from the m273 which is probably my favorite engine mercedes has made in a long time we're going to go back to that same proven recipe that we keep going to of m113 v8 five speed automatic but this time we're looking at it in cars that are relatively small so this is going to be the w203 c55 amg and its brother, the W209 CLK55 AMG. These cars share a platform underneath. They're basically exactly the same, all the way down to the transmissions and the engines. But basically, if you're looking to get a V8 Mercedes with an AMG badge and all of the AMG accoutrements, these are one of the fastest and the easiest and most affordable ways to do it. Whether you want a coupe, go buy the CLK55, or a sedan, go buy the C55. Both of these cars are absolute tire melters. The interiors are super nice on both of them, and they also handle really well and don't weigh a ton because of their small blueprints. They're relatively nimble. You can drive them every day. They're super reliable, and they're usually well under $10,000. C55s are starting to creep up, so if you want one, go get it now. Additionally, if you can find one, definitely grab a 2005 model year CLK55 AMG because those are the ones that got the huge brakes with the six pistons in front. They got dual exhaust in the back. Overall, just a little bit more desirable than some of those 03 and 04s. But either way, you're going to be very happy with the 209 or the 203 AMG. All right, so maybe you're a B58 kid and nothing on here has amused you at all yet because it's just not fast enough for you. Now we're getting to the ones that are, if you're going for just speed alone, these are going to be the cars you want to pay attention to. So my favorite pairing on here, again, it's going to be a little controversial, W220 S55 or C215 CL55. Why are these cars controversial? They had ABC suspension. So if you're not familiar with ABC suspension, it's totally hydraulically driven. The car uses a pump that operates at a couple thousand PSI feeds hydraulic fluid independently to the different shocks to actually balance out the ride quality. It's super comfortable and an awesome design when it works. When it stops working, it's really complicated and it's pretty expensive to repair, which is why when you have cars that are equipped with it, like the CL55 or the S55, 
People tend to avoid them just because they're afraid. The reason they're on this list right now is because both of those cars, if you shop at the appropriate model year, they switched from the naturally aspirated 5.4 V8 over to that M113K that we've been talking about. That's the holy grail motor, the supercharged 5.4, 470 horsepower stock, throw a pulley on it, it'll make all the power you want. The reason I'm recommending the 215 chassis or the 220 chassis is because since people are so afraid of this ABC system, you can usually scoop them up probably in iffy condition for well under 10 grand. The key here is that if you want to go ahead and fix this system, I fully encourage you to do that. It is an awesome system. But if you don't want to spend the few thousand dollars it might take to repair one of them, there are kits out there that will delete the ABC system and you can usually just bolt in a set of coilovers and completely eliminate the issue entirely. It is going to make the ride quality a lot worse than it was designed to be, but if you really just want power, you'd be hard pressed to find anything better than an M113K car. So sticking in controversy, because I love it, let me know down below how wrong you think I am. I am going to stick with both of those chassis, the 215 and the 220, but we're going to move on up a little bit. These are the CL600 and the S600 with, you guessed it, the M275 V12. So both of these are going to be twin turbo V12s. And if you're already writing this off, I understand why. Obviously owning a car now for, I don't know, eight grand, that was $150,000 20 years ago, means you're going to be paying pretty expensive upkeep just to keep the car on the road. And I won't discount that at all. You definitely need to be ready to spend some money on these cars. I mean, with the ignition cassettes they use and simple plug and coil service on these is like two grand or more. It might even be three grand off the top of my head. But while you will be paying, I will 100% acknowledge that, these cars are also feared for the same reasons that their M113K counterparts are, that same ABC suspension. So if you are willing to pay the upkeep of a V12 twin turbo, you can still grab these cars for under $10,000. If you want to do that ABC elimination or even just repair it, you can get a car that drives down the road perfectly fine, maybe a little bit less comfortable if you do choose to delete the ABC, but if you can muster the willingness to foot potentially a few thousand dollars of maintenance down the road just across your ownership, I can't really think of a better car that you could want to own than a twin turbo V12 sharing a power plant with the Pagani Huayra. And yes, it might be a little expensive to keep the car down the road, but you get massaging front seats, reclining rear seats. I mean, it makes 500 horsepower stock. If you're hunting for speed and you choose to do some maybe downpipes in a tune, I don't think you can physically go faster than a car sporting the M275 V12 with the bulletproof 7226 five speed behind it. So in a totally different vein than the last cars that we've just discussed, we're going to switch over to something that you actually can use every day if you want to, and is also really reliable and pretty cheap to own. This is going to be basically anything on the R171 chassis. So that's going to be the 2005 onwards SLK. And basically the reason that I'm kind of harping on these is I think they're one of the least appreciated Mercedes that's currently out there. It's more or less built on the W204 chassis C-Class. Parts are super available. The M272 V6 sold in them is awesome and it was sold in a bunch of different uh, displacements in the R171 chassis. So you can have 280, 300, or 350. I personally like 350 because that gives you the most power. So that one would have 270-ish horsepower. SLK 55, also awesome, but generally going to be outside the 10K price point. So we're going to ignore that one for now. But these cars handle phenomenally well. They're super easy to live with. They're really efficient. Again, you want to look out for that balance shaft issue, specifically on 05 and 06 models. But there's really nothing to fear on these cars other than that, aside from maybe an intake manifold replacement, which if you want to know what's involved in that, check out our channel. We just did a DIY on that pretty recently for the M272, but not that hard to live with. And on top of that, it really is one of the best handling Mercedes you can buy. And with the 270 horsepower variant of the uh, M272 V6, and if you find one with the six-speed manual behind it, which again, not that uncommon for this chassis, Top-down, manual, a great V6 in a great chassis. What more could you want? It's better than a Miata, I'm saying it right now, and it's still less than 10 grand. And last up on our sub $10,000 list of Mercedes that you should own if you're looking for fun and power, something I keep yelling at you guys. I'm hoping some of you are listening to me. It's the E300 TD on the W210 chassis or the E320 CDI on the W211 chassis. Both of these guys are diesels. 
There is nothing that has more power potential than a Mercedes inline six diesel. I mean, we've seen this overseas. The OM606 inline six that's actually sold in that W210 E300, they're, they've been calling it the diesel 2JZ for good reason. You do a couple simple modifications, mechanical injection pump and a big turbo, and these will make basically whatever power you want, and then they'll settle down on the highway and do 35, 40 miles per gallon, no problem. They'll hold up the test of time. The only thing you have to look out on those is basically the body decaying around the driveline. So W210s get a little rusty, but the, the driveline of the OM606 to the five-speed auto, bulletproof. It'll last forever. Moving on to its younger brother in the W211, these got the OM648, which is kind of related to the OM606. It also improved a lot on the design. It moves up an extra 0.2 liters in displacement, but it still has all of the same things that made the 606 great. It's got variable valve timing. It's dual overhead cam, which is crazy for a diesel. Direct injection. You just slap a big turbo on these, a tune, and you can make basically all the power you want. They're super reliable. And then also by grabbing the 211 rather than the 210 we just discussed, it's a little more modern. So if you're using it every day, it's a lot easier to live with and it's more efficient. If you want an idea of what potential this OM648 holds, check out my friends on the Black Smoke Racing channel on YouTube. They have drift cars that are making seven, eight, 900 horsepower on this engine out of a diesel reliably with barely any effort. And it still revs high too, it sounds cool. It does all the cool diesel things, but it behaves a lot more like a gas engine. So that is going to include my personal list of my favorite high horsepower, high speed Benzes under $10,000 in 2023. Of course, I can be a little forgetful. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Quite honestly, I'm always shopping, so never opposed to a new idea. But if you like this video, leave us a like. And of course, if you like content just like this, we have a lot more coming your way. So subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.